Stanford University economics professor John Taylor, thanks for being with me. Good to be here. We're at this Cato Institute event about rethinking monetary policy. Given this unprecedented era that we've been in on monetary policy, how should we rethink it, if at all? I think it's uh, important to rethink because in many respects the problems have been severe. We had this great financial crisis, uh, slow recovery in many parts of the world, still a lot of uncertainty where monetary policy is going, a lot of volatility in general. So in a sense we need to rethink. To me the rethinking in some sense is going back and seeing why things worked well when they did and that's really the 80s and 90s until this period and as I go back and look at that I see some things that rethinking means adapting some of the things that we forgot. Such as? I think the most important is what I call rules-based policy. There's a lot less volatility of policy, more predictability about what the central banks would do. It's, if you like, more conventional rather than unconventional policy, which is the word that's used. Such as the Taylor Rule? It's something like that would be pretty good, <laughs> uh, but more generally uh, some kind of rule, some kind of thing. And I always say that it's up to the central banks independent institutions to decide on their strategy. They ought to say what it is as best they can and that would be an improvement I think uh, compared to where we've been recently. You know the Federal Reserve has tried to communicate more certainly under this era and the Ben Bernanke era but where has the Fed failed on the communica communication side? There's been a, over the years a big change in communication. It used to be the Fed didn't even say what its target for the federal funds rate was. They just, you had to guess. It was a big business for the, for the financial press to decide what the interest rate was. That changed in the early 90s and so step by step we've had more transparency. But what happened, I'd say, or somewhere around 2003, 4 or 5, is their strategy became different. What they were actually doing became different. So there's one thing about a goal, the other thing is about a strategy to get to the goal, and what's been missing is the strategy to get to the goal. It's widely expected the Fed will be raising rates in December. The markets are assuming that. Then we are supposed to see gradual rate increases going forward. Isn't that sometimes easier said than done? Because in past tightening cycles, what started out being gradual there were times the Fed had to make intermediate moves. They went from 25 basis points to 50 basis points. So is it really going to be this easy that we just raise rates and casually move forward? There will probably be some, some differences. Uh, in all those cases, something's happened in the economy. Either inflation's picked up or it's been a, a major slowdown, which has brought them to a different path. But I think one thing to see what the advantages of a gradual path is, at least as a, as a baseline, is if you compare the quantitative the, ta the tapering from quantitative easing, the first one, taper tantrum we called it because people didn't know what was going on, the markets were quite volatile, and then when they got a strategy, gradual strategy, to reduce the amount of purchases, the so-called tapering, it worked quite well. Is there going to be a problem if we're raising rates and Europe is going in the opposite direction and other parts of the world are slowing? You know, I don't think so because I think there's some real advantages and I think there's a craving for this to get, get back to a regular kind of policy and that's what's going to be required. I think the, the world has, has suffered in a way from from being off track from these very unusual policies and so fixing that and getting back to where I think the Fed wants to go would be an improvement. By suffer do you mean things like asset bubbles or something else? No, I mean uh, just the whole general behavior of the global economy. We had a great recession, financial crisis, slow recovery. Emerging markets are not doing very well right now. Just globally speaking, it's not, been a, it's not been a very successful decade. Do you think that our economy is strong enough for rising rates? We still don't really see signs of inflation and GDP growth is running below what we've seen in past trends. You know, by all accounts, if you compared where we are now by those measures to 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we already would have had 2% inflation, 2% interest rate, I should say. And the economy just did well. You know, that was, so you look back at history and you say, well, in these circumstances, the economy would be probably working better with a higher interest rate. John Taylor, so nice to talk to you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you.